A lot of you guys have asked me to talk about the European Union and pollen, and I'm going to try to simplify this as much as possible so Americans who don't understand European politics can still figure out what's going on. The European Union was first created as an open trade market. It had nothing to do with the idea of being a super state. In fact, throughout history, since the creation of the European Union, anyone that said that this is becoming like a super state was called a crazy conspiracy theorist, spreading harmful and dangerous misinformation. It's like, no, the European Union is just a free market, bro. It's just a free market. But then you had people in the European Union that wanted more than a free market. So every single crisis imaginable, real or not, required the only solution to give more power to the European Union by the member states. Because otherwise, Giver Hofstadt gets upset. So over time, the European Union has become more and more of a state. Uh, I remember when the last Olympics happened. Romania didn't even get represented in how many medals it got. It was all of a sudden how many medals the European Union got as a whole. So you get like these small things which is signaling to people that now the European Union is actually a country. And uh, as a super state, it follows the same rules that a government has, which is that a government once created is going to get more and more powerful. It's just going to go bigger and bigger and bigger. This is a statement of fact. Every single ideology in the world accepts this premise. It's kind of interesting because from this premise, you have different ideologies. Like, for example, the communists will say, yes, the government does grow big, but that's okay because we can put our guys in charge and they're going to be benevolent and they're going to do the right thing. And then you have the libertarians that are saying, no, 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 we need to limit the government, make sure that we dismantle it so that it doesn't grow. So, but the idea that the government grows is a something that people disagree with. And this is what you notice with the European Union. It grows more and more and more. And their commissions, which are unelected in most cases, want to have power over the actual elected people. So the European Union wants to have power over Poland. For example, Polish people don't get to vote for the EU president. They don't go get to vote for Ursula von Leyen, but... The European Union wants to have power over the Polish lawmakers. And now they're actually saying that, no, we, we should have power even over Poland's constitution. So the thing is, no one agreed to this at all throughout the history of EU. Like no one said that, OK, well, we need to create the super state and we need to have this thing. No. OK, like the idea was that this is a free trading agreement. It's just a free trading block. It's why a lot of Brexiteers were joking by calling the European Union the, the free trade agreement. Like, why is a free trade agreement uh, lecturing my country about this and that legislation? Now, in my opinion, what the European Union is doing here is it's giving itself an own goal. Like, no one is a bigger enemy to the European Union than the European Union itself. Because from all the nations they decided to fuck with, they had to choose Poland. The nation which has in its national anthem, in, in one of the first verses, uh, Poland is still here. Like, this is a nation that refused to suck German schnitzel from the Nazis and refused to bow down to the Russians. Like, they just kept on fighting and fighting. If you look at the Polish history, they had a lot of people that just refused to surrender, refused to collaborate. Other nations, when they got invaded by the Germans, went to almost 70% or higher collaboration rate, but not Poland. They, they kept on fighting. And this is the nation that the European Union, which here in Europe, it's almost universally viewed that it's being run by the Germans, decided to fuck with Poland of all countries. And over something really stupid and trivial, and not to mention, if you look at the history of the European Union, there has been cases where... German law contradicted European law, and the European Union didn't get upset at Germany. Now, you can hypothesize why this is, like maybe at the time the European Union didn't have that much power and didn't want to slip the mask off, or maybe because they don't want to go against Germany. But regardless of why that is, now they're going balls deep against Poland. And why it's absolutely ridiculous is that they have beef with what appears to be the disciplinary chamber in the Supreme Court of Poland. Now, 
the Polish people, if actually followed their legislation, they were going to get rid of this court eventually. Like, they didn't want to get rid of it now because they wanted to have a bigger reform. But now that the European Union is moaning about it, all of a sudden there is great love for the disciplinary chamber in the Supreme Court of Poland by the Polish people. They love that chamber more than they love their mother. So every single Polish person is in love with this chamber. Why? Because the European Union hates it, that's why. It's the dumbest thing I ever seen. So at the end of the day, it's not even about the chamber, it's just about principle. It's the European Union wanting to say that, no, their laws actually are higher than the constitution of the member states. I mean, imagine the following scenario. Imagine that you're at high school and you want to end the inequality in your classroom because that's what normal human beings do. And you decide that in order to achieve this, everyone has to share their resources together. So you nominate one of your classmates as the administrator and the administrator gets to have access to donations from every single student so that he can redistribute the wealth properly because he is so wise and so smart. He, he is almost like a superhuman. And over time, what the administrator starts doing is he's asking for more donations. And he also comes up with stupid rules. Like, uh, for example, he wants you to be healthy. So he wants you to stop eating hamburgers at the cafeteria. Uh, he, he comes up with things, it's like, no, everyone needs to wear a jacket because you're cold. You know, he really cares about your health. So, so he comes up with these rules. And one day, maybe he comes up with a rule that is a little bit too much. Like, for example, he says that every single person in the class needs to have a, a packet of condoms in their pocket to avoid unwanted pregnancies and spreading uh, sexual transmitted diseases. And one kid says, look, my parents are Christians and they promote abstinence. So they will not allow me to buy a pack of condoms. And the administrator just slams his fist in the table and says, damn it, I don't care what your parents say. I am the administrator. That is pretty much what's happening here, right? Like every single nation state has a constitution and is empowered by the will of its people. But the European Union says, nay. I am above the people. I, I am the super state. You guys do what I'm telling you to do. Because I'm unelected and I'm bureaucratic. And that's pretty much where we're at. So now the European Union is saying that it's going to fine Poland uh, $1 million a day. unless they... And I'm thinking like, okay, you do realize that if you push this too far, number one, you're raising the Euroscepticism in Poland and in a lot of other states where Euroscepticism is also being raised. I mean... I'm looking at Romania, which was like the most Europhilic country in Eastern Europe. And, and now there is skepticism that is starting to rise in uh, Romania as well. Number two, you, at any point, you can just have Poland just say, all right, well, then we're leaving the European Union because it's financially unacceptable for us to remain. Like we're losing more money if we're remaining than if we're leaving. And number three, I, I just don't see the European Union having a win from this. Like, what, what exactly are they winning? They're like, oh, well, if Poland gives in and they remove this, count, this chamber, so what? I mean, the next time this happens, they're going to have to take it all the way from zero with another country, which eventually it will happen because the European Union is becoming more and more enlightened, more and more progressive than some of the countries in the Eastern Bloc. So the progressive values of the European Union is going to contradict the Constitution. Like, for example, in Romania right now, um, the right to work cannot be infringed. It's literally in the Constitution because we've been through communism and it says so. The, the right of the peoples to go to work cannot be infringed. Meanwhile, the European Union is talking about passes, green passes and whatnot to go to work. I mean, like, like how are you going to do that? You're going to say, oh, well, you know, like the, the constitution of Romania is a piece of paper. It's like, OK, but uh, did you ask the Romanians if they believe that? Do, do you even care? Uh, I, I mean, how many countries are you going to fuck with? But anyway, right. Let me know what you guys think. I hope I managed to simplify it and explain it at the most basic concepts so you can understand what's going on. And I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.